Hi, this is Sandy with a little bit of glitter. Today I have a cute little shaker card featuring Lawn Fawn stitched root veggies. I'm not a big fan of most root veggies, but I am a big fan of this card. As I was thinking about making this card, I was trying to figure out what I could use for the shaker pieces. I knew that I didn't want anything sparkly, so I was going to have to use cardstock, and whatever I used was going to have to be fairly small because my little veggies were small. As I was brainstorming with a friend, she suggested the idea of making it look like dirt and maybe adding some worms. I really wish that I could have done that, but the little worms in the Veggie Happy set were just a smidgen too large. After shopping my stash, I thought that the large hearts from the polka heart backdrop would be just perfect for my shaker pieces. If you want to be notified of future videos, please hit the subscribe button. You can also follow me on Instagram at Sandy Cogno or on my blog, A Little Bit of Glitter. Let's get started. When I make shaker cards, I prefer to use cardstock to create my shaker wells. So what I've done for this particular card is I have cut out four pieces of cardstock, actually five pieces of cardstock, and the front of my card using the large rectangle stitch stackable. I've placed my die cut pieces on the front of my brown piece of paper and taped them down exactly where I want them. And then I've placed that on top of one piece of cardstock and I've run it through my die cut machine. I will do this three more times lining those pieces of paper up exactly with the edges together to create four pieces of cardstock that are exactly the same so that I can create my four shaker wells. Once I get all of those pieces cut out, I will go ahead and glue them all together. This is, for me, is the easiest way to create uh, wells that are almost exact. Sometimes they're a little bit wonky on the inside, but it's still, for me, a much easier way to create the wells without having to cut a bunch of pieces of uh, foam tape. And then I don't have the problem with um, the stickiness of the foam tape and it also showing through the, the acetate windows. I've cut my carrot from fake tan cardstock and I'm going to use just a little bit of crackling campfire to touch up those edges just to give it a little bit of definition. Once I do that I'll clean off my little glass surface and then I'll move on to the piece that um, could be a radish or it could be a turnip. I'm going to turn mine into a turnip. I've cut my turnip from vanilla malt cardstock and I'm going to go around the edges with some tattered rose distressed oxide ink and then I'll go back in with a little bit of Victorian velvet uh, just to add a little bit of purple to that turnip. And for the beet, I'm going to go ahead and use the vanilla malt cardstock again, but I'm going to give the whole beet a uh, base coat of Victorian velvet. And then I'm going to come back in with a little bit of villainous potion to give it more of a purplish color.
Now that I've got those ready to go, I went ahead and I cut out their little faces using the die. Um, but I didn't want to glue the little faces on or insert them into the little openings. So I temporarily put them into the little shaker wells and just kind of mark it with a pencil as to where those little eyes and mouth are. And then I'm going to take a Sharpie or a dark black marker. I think you could use anything and just color in where they fall on that white cardstock. Um, the reason I did that is I just don't want any extra glue in those shaker wells or anything extra that would just uh, let those shaker pieces get hung up on it. So I just felt this was an easier way of getting those those features in there without a lot of extra pieces. Now that I've got my little friends glued into those openings, I wanted to go in with uh, markers and just kind of cover up or color in the white cardstock just so that it doesn't show on the outside of the brown cardstock that covers the whole shaker element. So I just kind of went in with my Copic markers, found something that matched those cardstocks fairly well, went around the outside of the shaker, and then I even went in on the inside of that little well and covered up all of the white in there. I just think it gives it a nice finished look uh, you don't really see any of the white cardstock, which is another reason why I prefer this method over using the foam tape. You just can't get that nice clean look using the foam tape. I'm just kind of weird that way. <laughs> I used an R22 Copic marker to go in and just draw on some little cheeks on the little veggies. I didn't use the die again just to keep the elements um, kind of flat inside that well. I used the Polka Heart backdrop and ground coffee cardstock to cut out a whole bunch of little hearts to use as shaker elements. I didn't use the real teeny little hearts just because they're, I thought they were too small. And I thought it would kind of detract from the fact that I had hearts in there. So I just stuck to the larger ones. Now that I have all of my shaker pieces filled, I'm going to just put some liquid glue around my little veggies and then up onto the white part of the cardstock and place a piece of acetate cut at four inches by five and a quarter and seal up that shaker. Now I want to cut the paper for the top of my card. I'm going to layer the gingham paper on top of the paper where my little vegetables are in my little dirt piece. I'm going to take my simple stitched wavy border die and place it across the top, kind of where I want the gingham to end and where I want my dirt to begin and go ahead, tape that down and then run it through my die cut.
as you can see, those are going to line up really nicely on the top of the card, giving a nice clean edge to the ground and the gingham. As I seem to do with everything, I decided I needed to ink the edges of my dirt. So I'm using a little bit of walnut stain to go around the edges of the brown paper, along with the little edges where the veggies are. I also watered down some of this, the Distress Oxide ink and spatter that dirt just a little bit to give it a little bit of dimension and just a little bit of interest. For the gingham, I'm using mowed lawn to go around those edges, but in retrospect, I probably would have um, been better off using Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxide. I think that would have blended in just a little bit better. I've cut the greens for the little veggies out of the algae cardstock. I used pine needle uh, to shade it for the first part of it, and then I went back in with Rustic Wilderness. Again, in retrospect, I would have just used Rustic Wilderness. That's a much better blend for the algae card stock, but it looks okay. It's fine. Now I'm gonna start putting everything together. I'm gonna to use liquid glue. I'm gonna go ahead and put the bottom of my card on first. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and put my gingham on also, I don't know what really happened when I cut those two pieces out. There's just the slightest bit of a gap on the left-hand side where the dirt and the gingham meet. And like I said, I don't know what happened. You can kind of see the acetate um, right where those two pieces join. It's okay because once I put on my letters, and I also cover it up with a little worm. You can't even tell that it's there. I think it might have, the die might have shifted when I was running it through my die cut machine. I had run it through quite a few times to make sure that the two layers cut. So I'm thinking that might have been the problem. Um, but like I say, you can't even tell once, once I get the letters put on. I use the Harvest Crate die to cut the sign out and then also the little piece of wood that's holding the sign. The lettering is from Riley's ABCs. I've glued that together and then in order to get that sign to line up nicely on the dirt, I'm just laying the piece of dirt that was cut out over that bottom of that sign and drawing on where that dirt comes so that I can cut it with my scissors and it just follows nicely along that dirt line. It's fussy I know but that's kind of the way I roll. <laughs> For the spacing on the letters, I'm going to start with the first letter and the last letter. So I'll start with the R and I'll place it so that it's right at the bottom of the very beginning. So the bottom lines up with the dirt and the top left corner lines up with the left edge of the card. And then on the N, I'll do the same thing, but the right part of the N, the upper right corner, will line up with the edge of the card. And then I will just take the other letters and kind of lay them out so that they fit nicely and evenly across the rest of the, the dirt.
I've glued down my little worm to cover up that little funky spot where the acetate was showing through. And now I'll just glue down the greens to all my little veggies. And then I will start working on getting that other little sign that says for you um, in the right place. Okay, now I'm going to be fussy again because I just can't help myself. For the second sign, I want it to kind of go down, but I don't want it covering up my beat. So I figured the best way to do this was to kind of figure out where that post was going to go. And then I had to figure out how I was going to cut it so that it wasn't covering up the beat. So I actually took one of the scrap beets that I had from all the little cutting out I did for the wells and I placed it on the post and then I just cut around that beet shape and I was able to get just the perfect right cut on that so that it looks like it was just made to go right there. I know it's fussy. <laughs> Okay, looks like we're winding down here. I had some little mice from the Ve Veggie Happy stamp collection. So I'm using the little one that's raking. I've got him down at the bottom, and then I've got the one pushing the wheelbarrow up at the top. I thought he looked really cute, um, kind of pushing his wheelbarrow over that hill of, of letters. In his wheelbarrow, um, I did some little turnips in there. I could have put in some little radishes, and I thought about that to, to kind of tie in the red color to the red uh, rootin letters, but then I thought, no, it'd probably look better just having some little turnips in there. Anyway, I think this card just turned out as cute as can be. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed watching this video and the whole process of putting this together. You can hit subscribe if you'd like to be notified of future videos. You can also follow me on Instagram at Sandy Cogdell or on my blog, A Little Bit of Glitter. Thank you so much for stopping by today and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.